speeds up to 70 miles per hour on the top of the course and again down here at the bottom. An exciting downhill race. It's a showcase for superb athletes and modern engineering technology. While athletes have been training to get the most out of their bodies, engineers have been designing skis to help skiers get the most speed and efficiency possible. Here to help us find the winning edge in skiing is John Howe, consulting engineer and author of the book, Skiing Mechanics. Welcome to the program, John. Hi, Ira. I'm amazed at how these skiers are able to go down those mountains, you know, remain up on the skis and get down there in record time. What is happening? Ira, this world-class athlete is really a highly complex system. It's got a brain up here, which is factoring all the speeds and forces mm -hmm. and so forth. A highly developed physique, body from years of training, lots of strength and equipment which has evolved over the years. And let's talk about skis, which I think is the most important part. And uh, you brought a whole bunch yeah, of interesting a, looking we've skis We've got a quick here. history of uh, ski technology, starting uh, from a ski typical of uh, 2,000 years ago, or probably up to the turn of the century. Looks just but, like a piece of yeah, wood. It was a, it was a working ski, maybe a, a doctor or a post, postman might have it. And, uh, but it, it's really kind of floppy and uh, <laughs> twists easily. Can't and control easily. that very easily, no, I would imagine. No. In about the 30s, uh, people discovered that skiing was fun, and they kind of evolved into recreational uh, skis. But really, the, the big change came, the revolution came after World War II, when uh, Howard Head was a, an aircraft engineer and was able to uh, put together aircraft aluminum developed during World War II with a, in a composite sandwich and properly put all the materials together to really make a predictable, hmm. uh, highly sophisticated structure. Yeah. Forty years later, we've evolved into this structure, which uh, is a very modern ski, but it's still basically a sandwich ski where the, the structural skins are spaced apart by a hmm. core, and uh, everything is optimized, the damping. Uh, you notice it's very torsionally yes, stiff. It's very stiff. It has a, has a nice shape to it. The only similarity, it seems, between this new ski and the real old one here is that they're, they're both long that, and that's, straight. That's you know? about it, right. Well, well yeah. let's, let's go talk about what the, the construction of yeah, the new type of skis are. What's going on inside, because i got the pieces and parts. So. Okay. These are the important materials which go into most skis today. I didn't realize you had so many different types of materials. You have metal, looks like wood, a little fiber here. Yeah, but each one has a very important function to serve. The most important thing is the stiffness of the ski. And we take uh, high tensile aluminum, mm -hmm. like head use, uh, way back after World War II, and or pre-cured sheet of fiberglass, mm -hmm. or both. Mm -hmm. And if you sandwich them apart, by a light or weight core, you can get the stiffness and strength of the ski. And that's, Torsals, that, and that's important when right. you ski. This makes the, the structural beam of the ski. Mm -hmm. these, other pro these other materials are important. You need a polyethylene to slide on the snow surface. You need a, a steel edge to, to give a sharp biting edge in the ice. Now, how important is the, uh, is the structure versus the shape well, of the really, ski? Well, really, as a skier, you're, you're more concerned with the external parts of the ski, the shape and the, the bending stiffness of the ski and so forth. For instance, uh, this little sample has a very exaggerated side curvature to it. If you put this ski at an edge to a surface and press in the middle with the weight, with your weight, you reverse bend that ski into a turn. So it bends backwards, and what happens then? Right. Well, if I can show it better on the surface here, mm -hmm. which kind of simulates snow. If, if it were flat, the ski would run, run straight. Mm -hmm. But when you bend it in a reverse curve by putting your weight in the middle, the ski wants to carve into a very long radius turn. So you just then have to put your weight on the edge and the ski will make its own little turn. That's right. And that's what helps you make those turns. Right. Well, this makes mm. quite a long turn. It's very important to the racer because uh, he, the racer who makes nice carved turns is going to dissipate the least amount of energy. But it's just important to me, the amateur skier. Sure, to... because it's helping you turn. You may make tighter turns oh. by skidding a little in the back. Mm -hmm. So much for theory. To, to find out if this actually works in practice, we went out to a ski slope and applied these mechanical principles and this is what happened. Unfortunately, the last time I'd been on skis was 10 years ago. And at that time, I wasn't about to win any medals. I'm skiing, I'm skiing. My skis felt a lot more comfortable than they did years ago. But it was how easily they turned that was really exciting. Whoa, great okay. turn. How can, how can a ski turn so well like that? Ira, it's all right in the ski. The side of the ski is a long arc. Mm -hmm. The curved side of the ski is actually part of a circle with a radius of 150 to 200 feet. You mean if you let the yeah. ski turn on its own, it would make an, an arc that big? Huh? Yes, it would make a very long carving arc, providing you put it on an edge and put some weight against it. 
So what if you don't want to turn in such a long arc? You want to make a shorter arc. Normally, you want to make a much smaller radius, especially when you're learning. Mm -hmm. So then you just put, a little, put your weight forward a little more, and the tail of the ski will slide a little more than the front. John showed me how, by angling both his knee and his hip, he can put his ski on edge. Then the ski will naturally carve an arc the shape of its side cut. If he puts his weight forward, the ski will skid into an even tighter turn. He controls his direction by shifting his weight. Weight on his left ski, and he turns right. Weight on his right ski, and he's off to the left. Let me try to make my wedge yeah. here. Get my skis to... Yeah, just, just hold yourself back with the poles. Just behave okay. the way I want them to. Right. And then just... That feels comfy. Yeah, and just roll the knees out a little and, and pick the poles up and start to slide. I have the weight pretty much even on both ski now. I can put the knee in a little bit, put the weight on it, and go right around. Put the knee in, put the weight on it, and go right around. I'm turning! Put more weight I'm on turning. it. I'm turning! More weight on it, more weight on it. Good, okay. Nothing to it. The easiest thing in the world. Now let's do one to the right and one to the left. Enough of this little hill stuff. I'm ready for the mountain. Let's go. Piece of cake. Who said skiing was so tough? See you in the lodge, Ira. <laughs> Thank you, John Howe, for making ski mountains a little less terrifying. We'll shush on to the rest of the show in just a minute.